Yeah, definitely. And and I think Trent, this is uh, something for you to respond to, uh, but the SRR program, I'm going to say circa 2018, I don't know exactly when the starting point was, but you basically had manufacturers with a spec sheet that said, you know, we want a 320 resolution thermal camera. Uh, we want an RGB camera on board. We want flight time around 30 minutes. It was basically to replace the, the drones that were being commercially taken off the shelf and used in, in the field. Um, but then you had manufacturers with basically carbon copies of each other. It was a, it, the same capabilities. Uh, Skydio added AI. Uh, you know, uh, everyone had their own flavors of what, how they were selling it. But it basically, they put all their investment money to ho in hopes to win this SRR uh, uh, first tranche. And then we're like, well, we might as well commercialize it. So you saw a lot of carbon copy drones come out. Now, in some of those, uh, you're seeing, well, in those uh, airframes, you're seeing thermal cameras, which are probably the largest component within the bomb. Doesn't matter if they're manufactured in China or doesn't matter matter if they're manufactured in Santa Barbara at FLIR. That's a question in which, you know, a significant part of driving the cost up is having that, that component specifically manufactured in the United States. So the question is, when DI, DIU uh, created these parameters, it was for the warfighter. But as the commercial space has adopted Blue UAS as a as a benchmark, was that the intention, or could DIU now uh, kind of lax on certain components, as Chris mentioned, and and basically just focus on communicative componentry uh, in how they vet the process, or is that not okay based off the standards of federal government, like you mentioned before? Yeah, so we don't have a whole lot of flexibility. Um, you know, the law is what the law is. The policy is what the policy is. It's written. And until either the law or the written policy that we have to operate by changes, that's what we're going to go and execute on. Um, I, you know, I certainly understand the cost. I understand the questions around, you know, what is needed, what isn't needed. But where we are today with the law and the policy as it exists, we don't have the flexibility to change that. And the other thing I would add is, you know, DIU, we're the venue between the warfighter and industry. We don't set the parameters. You know, the warfighter says, these are the things we need. And, um, you know, I think a lot of us have seen, you know, sometimes they're right and our, rec our requirements process gets it right. And sometimes it gets it wrong you know, whether it's out of date or it's excessive. And that, I think, contributes to what Chris was saying. Um, but we don't pick and choose anything. We execute the policy, we follow the law, and we try and match our commercial friends with the warfighter so that we can have a mutual win-win. 